This is Eugene from Work and Be Supply, and this is our second video in the series of switching from Mac to PC. In the first video, I talked about why I'm switching from Mac to PC for my creative work. If that's something you've been considering, you definitely should check out that video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about picking the right components for your PC. And we're gonna do this in a few different steps. First of all, we're gonna take a look at what kind of work you do so we can optimize your components for your software that you use. Second, we're gonna look at how to actually figure out your base components and compare them against each other. We're gonna make sure they're all compatible so they'll work well together once you assemble your PC. And then we're ready to buy the components. But don't do it right away because there's a few tips that can save you a lot of money. If you're new to building a PC, we've created an awesome free cheat sheet for you to make sure you don't miss any critical components and your whole build process goes super smooth. The first question you should ask yourself when building a custom PC is what do you need your computer to do? Every single person's needs are different and the kind of components you choose really should be optimized based on the kind of work you will be doing. So for me personally, I use a lot of Lightroom, Photoshop, and 4K video editing in Premiere. So I'm optimizing my computer to work best for that software and I'm buying components that will really be taken advantage of and used to their maximum potential when using those applications. If you do other kinds of work, maybe it's music production, 3D rendering, illustration, you might want a slightly different set of components. So it's really important to figure out what you'll be doing. There's a lot of great custom PC builds online that are all laid out based on specific use cases and software. So the first thing to do is type in your use case plus PC build guide. So for me, it would be photographer, PC build guide or video editing PC build guide. You can do the same thing for illustrators. And I recommend finding a few different guides. And one thing that's really important is make sure they're fairly recently made. PC components get upgraded pretty often. So ensuring that your guide is made from the last year or ideally even the last six months is very important to getting the best possible components at the right price. Once you have a few listed out, it's time to kind of read through them, take a look at what the people's needs are and make sure they match with your own. And once you've landed on a good one, you can fill out our cheat sheet with those like base components that you'll need, such as your motherboard, graphics card, CPU, RAM, all those things. Now that you've got a great list of components, it doesn't mean you run out and buy all those right away. You should do a little more research and compare them against similar components to see where it fits in your value. You'll find a lot of guides are priced out at a few different tiers. It could be entry level, mid range, and sort of pro level. Um, and depending on where your price that you're hoping to hit falls, you can go with one of those builds and use that as your base build. Once you have those parts and you filled out the cheat sheet with all the parts and potential parts you're thinking of getting, uh, it's now time to do some comparisons and see if there's places you can save some money without losing much performance or spend a little bit more but get a lot more performance. So how do we do this? We look for benchmarks. There's people online who will take the same computer and keep all the same parts in it, but just test different types of components. So for example, they'll run through four similar types of video cards running the exact same test, such as for example, exporting a video from Premiere and they'll say, oh, on this video card it took two minutes, on this video card it took a minute and 50 seconds, with everything else being the same, how much impact does this actual component have? So this will give you an idea of where you can save some money or spend some more money. So sometimes you wanna save money if you're gonna, if the component you're looking at doesn't actually give you a huge benefit but costs a lot more. You can save a lot of money by going to a previous model uh, that gives you maybe 90% of the performance but costs half as much. Similarly, sometimes you can spend a little bit more money, but get a huge increase in components, especially depending on your specific software. So when you're looking for the benchmarks, don't just look at general benchmarks, look at things specifically to the software you use. So it would be maybe Premiere benchmarks or Illustrator benchmarks. All of these things exist, people do a lot of tests and it doesn't take very long until you start to narrow in on which exact part from what manufacturer is best for your needs. So as you go through all the major components, really the things that are most expensive, you'll kind of start getting a feel for which ones are right for you and you can update your list on our cheat sheet uh, to include those components and see where you land in that build. So once you've compared all your components, you're ready to go to the next step and that's ensuring all the components speak well to each other. Now, 
that seems kind of like a tricky thing to do, but oftentimes manufacturer websites, um, you know, forums, people talk about this sort of thing a lot. So you, you go through your main components and make sure they're compatible with your uh, motherboard mainly. So is your CPU fit your motherboard? Does your motherboard fit the case? Um, you know, there's a kind of SSDs you're getting. Do they have slots in your motherboard? Does your video card physically fit inside the motherboard in your case? Um, you can just type those things out in Google and most likely you'll find an answer from someone. And if not, you can contact your local computer store where you're thinking about buying the parts from and I'm sure they would be happy to help you out. Once you make sure everything runs well together, there's one more thing you have to check and that's power consumption. One of the main components you're gonna be buying for your computer is a power supply and you get to choose how much energy you wanna buy. So you wanna have a bit of a buffer room for how much energy your computer requires. You know, you might add on new components later on and you don't wanna to have to replace your power supply. It's a bit of a pain. Once you've narrowed in on the kind of components that you have, and you can start to figure out that they're all cross compatible. The final step is to add all of the power consumption. Now this information isn't super easily available, but there's a great uh, website that we've linked in our cheat sheet where you can put in all your components and then it'll actually tell you how much power your computer will likely draw. And you can use that information to figure out the best type of power supply to buy for your machine. At this point, you have pretty much everything you need to go build a computer, um, but don't run out right now and buy everything at once. Computer components fluctuate a lot in cost and there's a lot of sales throughout the year. So if you have some time, a few months to buy your components over, you can really save a lot of money. Um, for example, on our RAM, we saved about 30% off the cost and you know that ends up being hundreds of dollars for the whole machine um, to the point where throughout the whole build by picking which items to buy on certain sales and maybe waiting a little longer or buying things a little sooner, we managed to save probably one to $2,000 over the course of the entire build. Now our build is pretty expensive. You might not save that much money on yours, but you know, a few hundred bucks won't hurt either. The other thing I will say is a couple of components, they were on sale, but I didn't buy them right away and they quickly sold out. So often when uh, technology components go on sale like that, you know, they have a limited quantity and a lot of people are kind of waiting on them to buy the right piece at the right price. So if you see something with a good price, I would recommend acting on it pretty quick uh, instead of saying like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow or the next day. Um, it might be gone by then. So now you're pretty much ready to build your PC. You know, you figured out your use case, you know what kind of software you'll be using and what components are really utilized by that software. You've got your base list of components that you've compared benchmarks to see the best value for them. You made sure they're all cross compatible. You figured out how much power they're gonna draw and you've waited for the right time to buy them at the right price. You're doing great and the next step is to build your computer. This can seem a little daunting, but it's actually super fun and I'm really excited to jump in and build our new PC alongside with yours. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our build video and don't forget to download our cheat sheet, which will make this whole process a lot easier. I'm excited to dive in and build our computer right alongside yours. It's gonna be a lot of fun.